Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel I read poetry, mostly work by contemporary poets, occasionally poems of my own, and once in a while poems from the past. Today's poem comes to us from Larry Levis from his collection Winter's Stars, published by University of Pittsburgh Press in 1985. Um, I'm going to read a poem towards the end of this collection uh, entitled Those Graves in Rome. Those Graves in Rome. There are places where the eye can starve, but not here. Here, for example, is the Piazza Nirvana. And here is his narrow room overlooking the steps and the crowds of sunbathing tourists. And here is the Protestant cemetery where Keats and Joseph Severn join hands forever under a little shawl of grass. And Keats's name isn't even on his gravestone because it's on Severn's. And Joseph Severin's infant son is buried two modest grassy steps behind them both. But you'd have to know the story. How bedridden Keats wanted the inscription to be simple and unbearable. Here lies one whose name is writ in water. On a warm day I stood here with my two oldest friends. I thought then that the three of us would be indissoluble at the end, and also that we would all die, of course, and not die. And maybe we should have joined hands at that moment. We didn't. All we did was follow a lame man in a rumpled suit who climbed a slight incline of graves, blurring into the passing marble of other graves to visit the vacant home of whatever is not left of Shelley and Trelawney. That walk uphill must be hard if you can't walk. At the top, the man wheezed for breath, Sweat beaded his face, and his wife took a look of concern, or a look of concern so habitual it seemed more like the way our bodies some day will have to wear stone. Later, that night, the three of us strolled, our arms around each other, through the Via del Corso and toward the Piazza di Espana, and as each street grew quieter until, finally, we heard nothing at the end, except the occasional scrape of our own steps, and so said goodbye. Among such friends who never allowed anything still alive to die, I'd almost forgotten what most people leave behind them disappears. Three days later, staying alone in a cheap hotel in Naples, I noticed a child-smeared fingerprint on a banister. It had been indifferently preserved beneath a patina of varnish applied, I guess, after the last war. It seemed I could almost hear his shout years later on that street, but this is speculation, and no doubt the simplest fact could shame me. Perhaps the child was from Calabria and went back to it with a mother who failed to find work, or perhaps the child died there twenty years ago of malaria. It was so common then, the children crying to the doctors, quirquining, and to the tourists who looked like doctors, quirquining, it was so common you did not expect an aria, and not so much on a gravestone either, although his name is on it, and weathered stone still wears his name. Not the way a girl might wear that too large faded blue work shirt of a lover as she walks thoughtfully through the Via Fratelli to buy bread, shrimp, and wine for the evening meal with candles and the laughter of her friends, and later the sweet and kindling of desire. But something else, something cut simply in stone by hand and meant to last because of the way a name, any name, is empty and not empty and almost enough. That was <clears throat> Those Graves in Rome, from Winter Stars by Larry Levis, 1985. Um, if you enjoyed this reading and this poem, please do check out the description of the video for more information about Larry Levis um, and about the other books and other things that he's written, um, as well as where to purchase this particular book. Um, if you want more information about this series or other projects I'm working on, it's also there in the description, so do check it out. Um, if you like what I'm doing, please give this video a thumbs up and like it and consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, if you do and hit the bell icon, you'll be notified every time there's a new video, which works out to be pretty much every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. 
Um, if you're a poet with a book out and would like to be featured on this channel, please reach out to me um, by email or send me a message through YouTube or a comment below. And uh, we'll try to work out a way for, for me to get a copy of your book so that I can uh, take a look and see what it is I can read and, and perhaps uh, well share on this channel as well. Um, and if you have other suggestions, I'm always open for that as well. So uh, I think that's about it for this time. So until next time, I wish you all the very best and hope that you uh, find joy in whatever you're doing for your creative practice, um, whether you are in the cycle, uh, in the place in the cycle where you're creating or if you're researching and exploring, if you are dreaming, if you are imagining, or if you are immersing yourself in someone else's work. Um, wherever you are, I wish you all the best and I wish you much happiness as you pursue that. Uh, this work, and it is work of creativity, of producing, writing, and imagining other places, other worlds, other moments in time, or translating what we've experienced into something distilled, something quiet, something powerful, something that storms or rages or slips in like a small knife between the cracks in a giant wall. Whatever it is, I'm grateful that it does what it does in art. And I hope you find joy in that as well. Um, so until next time, uh, wishing you all the very best with your creative practices and my hoping the best for me too, <laughs> as I pursue my other projects. Um, but uh, I will be back again soon. And uh, until then, stay safe and well, keep reading, keep writing, keep producing your art, and I will do the same. And I'll be back again with another video and more poetry soon. Till then, take care and goodbye.